So the reviews on Mordenkainen's Tomb of Foes are a dime a dozen around here because everybody's jumping on that bandwagon, including me, I guess. But the real question is, is it worth buying? Hey, Luke Hart here. So I have been a Dungeon Master since high school, and I make Dungeon Master tips and resource videos almost every Tuesday. So if you're a Dungeon Master and you wanna level up your games, roll a crit on that subscribe button down below. Okay, enough of that. Let's answer our question. Should you buy Mordenkainen's Tomb of Foes? I mean, is it worth it? We're gonna look at the two different parts of the book, the first half being lore, and the second half being monster stat blocks. Now let's talk about the lore first. Mordenkainen's has some really good lore about devils and demons, elves, including drow, dwarves and dwerger, the gith, that's gith yankee and gith sarai, and halflings and gnomes. Now, yes, some of this lore has been recycled from previous editions. However, that's rather unavoidable unless you want to change canon. So if you already have the Finnish Codex 1, or the Finnish Codex 2, or the Complete Book of Elves, yeah, you might not gain a whole lot here. However, there is a lot to be said about not having to lug around a dozen books, when you could just lug around one book on lore. And probably you want to take Volo's Guide with you as well, because there's lots of good lore in there. And Monster Manual has lots of lore in it as well on monsters and baddies, so don't forget that one. And technically, if you're running things in the different planes, there is some lore on the planes in the Dungeon Master Guide, so you're probably going to... And, while you're at it, I mean, depending on the study that you use, a Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide might be worth it as well. So technically, we are up to five different books. And you could probably say that I didn't think this point through very well. And this isn't really the point of the video, but I think I just made a fairly convincing argument for PDFs. All right, moving on. The lore also sprinkles in new races and sub-races for players. For instance, if you're an elf, you can now be a sea elf, an Eladrin, or a Shadar Kai. That's pretty cool. And there's a new race, the Gith. You could be either a Gith Yankee or a Gith Sarai. That's even cooler. It also includes the Dwerger and Deep Gnome races, though technically those are recycled from the Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, so if you've already got that, then nothing new there. All right, so the verdict on the lore half of the book. If you're a Dungeon Master, it's definitely a buy. Lore is super helpful for building out campaigns and informing, well, lots of things during gameplay. However, if you're a player, honestly, I would say this is a pass. And I think it's a pass for players because honestly, instead of buying the book, I think it's probably better for you to just ask your dungeon master to get you the stats for any new race or sub-race that you want to play. And you know, it's possible that he would even let you borrow the book so that you could read the lore. However, if your dungeon master doesn't have the book and you love lore and you really want to play some of these new races or sub-races, then yeah, sure, go pick it up. Oh, real quick, let me know down in the comments what your favorite race or sub-race in Dungeons & Dragons is. All right, let's move on to the monster stat blocks, the bestiary. I think I'm saying that word right. First of all, I'm gonna be straight up with you. I love, absolutely love, the new monsters in Morning Kingdom's Human Foes. They're just, they're just freaking sweet. First of all, you've got the GIF, which a lot of people are apparently nerding out over and also quite disappointed that they aren't a playable race. All of the demon lords. The Ark Devils. Abishai! Dwerger. Drow. Gith Yankee and Gith Sarai. The Tortle! Or is it Tortles? What's what's plural for Tortle? Is it that Tortle sounds weird, is that right? Grey Render. I love Grey Render. Grey Grey Renderers? Grey Renders? And lots of other classic monsters such as the Burbalang, the Iron Cobra, the Spirit Troll, the Measle, and Vampiric Mist. I mean, let's get real. That's freaking awesome. As a dungeon master, I cannot pass this by. No way. However, despite all the coolness of these monsters, I think there is one important point worth mentioning. If you look here, you can see stat blocks by challenge rating. Now, it does look like a fairly even distribution across all of the levels. However, if you avoid building encounters with solo bad guys because they generally tend to suck due to action economy issues, then it's possible you're not going to get to use a lot of these monsters until you get to higher levels. And it is my understanding that unfortunately a lot of D&D games simply don't last long enough to get to higher levels. However, if you do deploy solo bad guys or your campaigns are in the higher levels, then by all means get this book. All right. Verdict on the bestiary half of the book. For a dungeon master, it is a strong maybe 
leaning toward a buy. Simply because depending upon your individual game, you may or may not get a lot of use out of the monster stat blocks. However, even if you think you're probably not gonna end up using some of these monster stat blocks, they are really cool. So you might wanna buy this book just to read them. However, for players, this is a hard pass. Like, really hard. A player does not need monster stat blocks. In fact, a good argument could be made that a player shouldn't be reading the monster stat blocks. The final verdict. If you're a dungeon master, Morden Canyon's Tomb of Foes is a buy. And if you're a player, well, I'd save your money and go buy Xanathar's or something like that because I think you're probably gonna get more use out of this book than you would out of Morning Canyons. At the end of the day, Morning Canyons Tomb of Foes really seems like it was made for a dungeon master, although they did sprinkle in little things for players here and there. Oh, and I almost forgot, I'm giving away a copy of Morning Canyons Tomb of Foes. Go ahead and check out that link over in the description or down in the comments for more information. I guess both of those things are down. Hey, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and share it with your friends. Remember, I make Dungeon Master tips and resource videos almost every Tuesday. So if that interests you, consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you don't miss anything. And until next time, let's play D&D.